Good afternoon. Welcome to Okta and Shape's demo of the financial services template. We're here this afternoon to show you how we can make your environment more accessible and safer for users with a couple of simple integrations. I'll let Jason from Shape take it away. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Jason Lang. I'm a senior solutions engineer from uh, Shape Security. We were acquired by F5 in January of 2020, and I'm glad to be here. Today, we're going to show a demonstration of how the Shape solution can integrate into um, a customer's environment, uh, specifically focusing on an Okta integration with a third party uh, banking application. Um, so here we are in the first uh, slide. We're going to be uh, going through this information. Uh, so uh, next slide, please. So the Shape solution uh, is premised upon three main pillars. Uh, the first and the, ultimately what we view as the most important is can you eliminate unwanted synthetic or bot traffic? Uh, what you may not realize is that the proportion of traffic that visits your website is more than likely 60 to 90 percent or more automation. It's not human traffic. It's not the customers that you want. Um, and so at the forefront of that, removing that automation is key. And this is where Shape uh, got started seven or eight years ago, solving these problems for the likes of Starbucks. Uh, Chase and uh, Wells Fargo. Now once we've solved that problem and eliminated the automation, what we can really then focus on is the human element. Um, are you a bad human, i.e. a fraudster? Or are you a good human uh, where we maybe can relax some of the security restrictions that are placed in front of you to make the digital experience easier to navigate? Uh, and we call that friction. So we're there to remove friction for good users um, and transparently defeat fraud behind the scenes. Next slide, please. And why this is a problem is because of all of the security breaches that have happened over the last decade or so. There's billions of credentials available on the dark web for free. And those credentials can be used to target any particular website that has a login form. And the username and password combinations are just attempted in the hundreds of thousands or millions of transactions per hour just to see if the accounts will work. And this is where up to 90% of traffic or more on a login is likely targeted automation, and this is called a credential stuffing attack. This is where Shape uh, actually invented that term, credential stuffing, and this is where our solution excels at stopping automation. And you might think that a simple solution is just to uh, force all your users to change their password. Unfortunately, uh, per Google and some other well-known uh, publications, Users are lazy and uh, they don't choose the best, most secure passwords. And so there's a very high likelihood that the password they select next time is likely something they've used before or more likely someone else has used before in the top 100 list of common passwords. So this problem doesn't simply go away uh, with user behavior. You really need something uh, running point in between. Next slide, please. And so um, what we have here is we have an example um, of a credential stuffing campaign. And what this looks like is a very diverse set of a massive volume of traffic targeting a particular organization. Uh, this is an example of a Canadian financial institution, one of the big five. And you can see here that there's a massive attack surface, 300 million login events from almost 240,000 IP addresses, thousands of different networks, and apparently 78 million different device types. Uh, as you probably know, if you're familiar with web traffic, there's only a couple hundred legitimate user agent strings, and uh, 78 million is just an astronomical number. They're clearly using some type of randomization in the attack vector to change up the user agent. 
And the reason they do this is to try and get around some of the more simpl simplistic bot solutions uh, that are predicated on lists of known good or known bad in terms of blocking. And uh, this attack is absolutely shapes forte in mitigating. Uh, we do not use things like IP address, uh, geo-based blocking, any signature-based detection algorithm. It's all uh, proprietary secret sauce, uh, uh, silent challenges to the client uh, and observing the user behavior in terms of making a real-time decision. So we can see here that it was initially detected and then later mitigated. Uh, and now what we see today is that same customer uh, earlier this year where their traffic is now what I like to call mean and green. Um, you see a very evident diurnal day-night pattern where the human users are not very active in the middle of the night. Uh, the attackers don't go away. They are pictured here in the little red spikes. However, for the large part, this customer is known as not a good attack surface. And we are protecting them both on the web, their native mobile application, as well as their business-to-business -business, uh, APIs, this OFX uh, digital API channel, which is used by the banks to exchange money between each other after hours. Next slide, please. And so if we change our focus now and talk about fraud, what you end up finding in many organizations uh, who have a mature security stance uh, and a fraud play is that there's a number of different commercial tools that are leveraged by different groups or business units within the organization who naturally don't talk to each other. Um, and a lot of these systems are predicated on rules. And that means that in order to configure these systems, you have to think like a fraudster in order to figure out what fraudster behavior looks like in order to try and find it. And the sad reality is that this clearly is not working. With the tens or hundreds of billions of dollars spent a year in security solutions, the fraudsters have an almost effortless way of, of pushing through these particular threat vectors uh, and bypassing them entirely. And so, uh, next slide please. What we see from this is we've produced an evolution of uh, what we're calling SAFE, uh, or the Shape AI Fraud Engine. And it's a simple piece of JavaScript that is deployed on every single page within the application, uh, again on web or mobile, and it's able to paint the picture of what a good user looks like differently from a bad. And along each transaction, you're gonna get a real-time indicator as to whether or not that particular transaction should be uh, flagged, uh, challenged, or just outright denied. And so with each transaction, you're gonna get a, a recommendation from uh, Shape in terms of a real-time encrypted cookie or an HTTP header that your application will then act on in order to call, uh, for example, a third-party API step up off through Okta. Uh, next slide, please. And what we see here is some real world findings of SAFE deployed at a Canadian digital only bank. Uh, they shared with us their confirmed fraud file and that is a key data input to our solution. Uh, we want a customer's confirmed fraud file so that we can train our machine learning models on that particular data set because each customer's data set is unique and the fraud vectors are different. And we're not reliant upon rules. Uh, we're leveraging a variety of different machine learning models to surface information on its own. And as fraud patterns change, those information data points will change as well. So here we see pictured on the left, $12.4 million of gross fraud loss to date. And of their existing in-house commercial tools, so they have some off-the-shelf tools that they've uh, purchased and deployed for a number of years, they've only detected about 19% of that fraud themselves. Only 19%. The rest of the fraud was user-reported. Um, that's not a great uh, situation to be in. Obviously, those customers are, are detecting the fraud for them. And the average gross fraud loss per account was approximately $3,500 in this case. 
Now if we focus on the right, we're looking at the output or the outcome of what a safe deployment can add. So on top of and in parallel to their existing fraud system, uh, with a 0.1% false positive rate, for this customer that's about a dozen or so additional cases for them to review per day manually, um, that delivered almost two times more fraud detected on average in a given month than their existing tools. So 177% more fraud detected that they didn't know about uh, because their in-house detection rate is only 19%. If, however, we increase the false positive rate just a bit, up to 0.5%, we can almost triple the amount of fraud that's detected uh, by SAFE above and beyond their existing fraud tool. And what's interesting here is that with a projected deployment of SAFE, we think we can save this particular institution almost $10 million a year uh, in fraud savings that they were unaware of previously. Next slide, please. Um, and so what you're going to get with this particular uh, deployment, uh, once SAFE is deployed, uh, we also provision a uh, executive level dashboard indicating uh, the successful deployment of, of the safe data at that customer's environment. So we're showing them their current fraud rate in basis points, uh, graphing the number of transactions by type that we've, put, uh, we've uh, delivered a recommendation on. Uh, they can toggle this information between transactions and dollar value and they also have the ability to upload their own fraud file through the web interface in a secure manner. And again, we're, we're reliant on that customer's fraud file to train machine learning models. So we have a generic model that would apply uh, before we have any data from a customer, but we really do rely upon that customer uploading what fraud means to them uh, so that we can deliver this type of outcome to the client. Next slide, please. Um, and so what we're able to deliver is similar to the bot solution, Shape is a managed service and we are solving the problem of unwanted automation and bots. We're doing the same thing in the fraud space and we're very disruptive to the market in this uh, design in that we're able to deliver two to five times less fraud per month with less effort from you, the customer, in terms of tracking down all these cases. And on the customer friction side, we're even able to reduce the number of uh, multi-factor authentication step up that are required for known good users. We've done a number of surveys of some very large financial customers and over 85% of MFAs are actually going to known good users. Um, so we can reduce the friction to known good users uh, on web and mobile. And we're really um, bullish on our ability to almost guarantee a return on investment in a number, a small number of months, between one and two months, if not in weeks. Um, and this is just a testament to the machine learning data and the lack of rules that are driving these particular engines. Next. Okay, now time for the demo. All right, so I'm going to talk quickly about TechJutsu's financial template just before the demo. So here at TechJutsu, we're IAM implementers. It's our bread and butter and what we do. And one of the things that we have kind of noticed in our tenure as implementers, both in and out of TechJutsu, is the challenge of bringing together good products into a cohesive solution. And to address that, we created the Tech Jutsu Financial Template to help meet all of your financial needs with some really strong best in breed products in one go. As a financial institution, you are aware of the challenges of finding a good member solution. Every company offers part of the solution, but it's a lot harder to find ones that integrate everything together in a way that's right for you you see a lot of people really cobbling together their solutions and struggling to keep up with the digital banking ecosystem. So 
Our solution to that is the financial services template. We integrate Shape's impressive fraud alerting that you've just seen and Okta's industry-leading identity software to provide a full picture financial template that reduces your risk and provides a fantastic member experience. So as part of this template, we really reduce your risk of exposure of member data, fraud losses, and chargebacks, and improve the member experience with really smooth MFA and adaptive authentication that you'll see in just a couple minutes. So with Okta, part of the future you get is unified user profiles and complete data all in one place, making it a lot easier to manage your members or customers and secure access with the combination of Okta and Shape. We also provide, as part of it, an op the option for member verification through your IVR and easier data protection. And one of the advantages of bringing in expert IAM people is that we save you time and money. We know IAM, we know our projects, so we're able to catch your landmines and roadblocks ahead of time and steer you away from them, reducing your risk and expense on the project. One of the other features we provide here at TechJutsu is our customer verify solution. So instead of asking your members a bunch of questions like, when's your birthday? What are the last four digits of your debit card? When did you, what is your birthday of this account? You, you just send them a prompt on their phone to a second factor that they've already set up through your banking system and just reduces your verification friction and changes guessable questions to a secure token response. So it was important for us at TechJutsu to partner with the best vendors we could find. One of our identity partner is Okta. They're, as you can see, a leader in the Gartner Quadrant. They're recognized for having created really successful large customer identity deployments and for the very deep customization available through the Okta widgets and APIs to match Okta's identity framework into your system and user experience. And now that I'm done talking, I'll show you the live demo. So I'm going to play the role here of a nice normal neighborhood bank customer. As you can see, our bank is providing login through Okta. This is the Okta login widget we're using here. So this is pretty much pre-built on the development side. I just click the login button, send my phone a push verification, and there we are. I've just confirmed that it's me trying to sign in. Obviously we wouldn't normally see token data here, but for a demo app, it's good to provide. I can manage my accounts in this app as well. Transferring money from my corporate to my checking account, I make a thousand dollar transfer. And on the back end, I'm at home on a computer I use all the time. I'm navigating through the login pages at a time that makes sense to the shape integration on the back end of this. So when I click submit transfer, a thousand dollars is simply transferred into my account with no need for a step up authentication. And now Jason from shape will show us the point of view of that from a fraudster's perspective. Okay, now we're going to play some role playing where I'm going to assume the fraudster. In this particular example, I'm now going to log in to an account that I don't own. So I'm going to attempt to commit what's known as third party fraud. I've got this account uh, either through social engineering, through phishing email, phishing texts, or perhaps I already control the user's email address, as is much often the case and I could simply go through the forgot password flow and answer some of the questions that I likely have the answers to already in order to gain access to the account. Now on this particular page, I'm going to demonstrate how if I attempt to transfer the same amount of money as Gabrielle just did, that my challenge is uh, intercepted. We see here in the debug console within the browser that MFA required by fraud policy is stated. 
Behind the scenes, SAFE is serving a real-time recommendation that this particular transaction should be challenged. Uh, and that's why we see this here. And then the MFA step up is being done by Okta through calling their API. So if I fail to uh, complete this because I don't have the uh, MFA token that's needed, you'll notice that the transfer is not successful and the MFA completed is not true. If I attempt to transfer that money a second time, and this time I have that information, um, I can then initiate that transfer request. And we see here that MFA completed is now true and that money has been transferred. So again, behind the scenes, uh, the safe solution is generating real-time recommendations with each significant user interaction. Uh, that could be adding a payee, changing the email address, changing the contact information, such as the telephone number and the mailing address, um, registering for e-billing. The opportunities are really endless. Um, so that concludes my portion of the demo. Back to you, Gabrielle. A summary of what we just saw in the demo. Protecting the application, either web or mobile, from unwanted automation and bots is the job of Shape Enterprise Defense or Silverline Shape Defense, two similar products with different price points for different customers. Shape provides an outcome of eliminating 99% of unwanted automation from ever reaching origin. This has drastic effects on reducing false positives of downstream systems that rely on only human transactions being present uh, and can provide great insights into your organization in terms of marketing and security to have a better understanding of how your human users are using your application. Because we're a managed service and we're often operating in a proxy fashion, we're actually blocking the unwanted traffic from ever reaching your origin server. The second product featured here is SAFE, the Shape AI Fraud Engine. This is a product that's providing real-time indicators across the entire user journey for every significant navigation event. This could include things like updating your account profile information, adding payees, initiating fund transfers, or other types of activities that are commonly done in the banking industry. With every recommendation, we're generating a real-time indicator that is one of four values. It is either allow, challenge, which we saw today in terms of an MFA step up provided by Okta, review, which is implied that there's a fraud team behind the scenes that will be opening up a new fraud investigation case for this particular transaction or set of transactions. And finally, block. Now, as is often the case in fraud, you don't actually want to block in such a way that the fraudster is told that that transaction is not going to be completed at this time. Uh, we always want to stay one step or more uh, ahead of the attackers and the fraudsters. And so if you have a way of denying that transaction transparently in such a way that the user experience doesn't change between good and bad transactions, but you just handle that differently in the back end, that is the recommendation that Shape would provide to all of our customers as how they handle that block capacity. So hopefully that was informational and we'd love to take any questions that you may have at a later date. Back to you, Gabrielle. Thank you. And if you have any questions about anything we've shown here, you're certainly very welcome to get in touch with either Shape or TechJutsu on our websites or our sales contact. Thank you very much.